I'm inclined to say that Donald Trump is becoming even more unhinged than he usually is, but, you know, that really isn't shocking to anyone. I think it'd be more surprising if he actually acted like a functioning adult for at least a day. But lately, he really has been more stupid than usual, for lack of a better word. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to describe it. We need some, you know new words to describe what's happening. The current vocabulary just doesn't do it justice. So, as many of you know, he has been raging against mail-in voting. Not because this actually will lead to fraud, as he claims, but because if more people vote, if mail-in voting increases voter turnout, that means he probably will lose, because Democrats always win when people show up to vote, and Republicans lose. So he's banking on people staying home and feeling demoralized and not voting or not being able to overcome the obstacles to vote in order for him to get reelected. And here's what he tweeted out. There is no way, zero, that mail-in ballots will be anything less than substantially fraudulent. Mailboxes will be robbed. Ballots will be forged and even illegally printed out and fraudulently signed. The governor of California is sending ballots to millions of people. Anyone living in the state, no matter who they are or how they got there, will get one. That will be followed up with professionals telling all of these people, many of whom have never even thought of voting before, how and for whom to vote. This will be a rigged election. No way. Now, he's trying to prime you to think that mail-in voting will lead to fraud specifically because it will enable undocumented residents to vote, but that's not going to happen. You will not get a ballot mailed to you unless you are a registered voter. If you are not a citizen, you cannot become a registered voter. So he's fear-mongering, but one thing that you may not have noticed about that tweet is that Twitter actually put a little disclaimer with a link saying, get the facts about mail-in ballots, which leads to a headline which reads, Trump makes unsubstantiated claim that mail-in ballots will lead to voter fraud. So they fact-checked him, and they also explained in a tweet, we added a label to two real Donald Trump tweets about California's vote-by-mail plan as part of our efforts to enforce our civic integrity policy. We believe those tweets could confuse voters about what they need to do to receive a ballot and participate in the election process. So, uh, yeah, simply put, they fact-checked him. And in response to said fact-checking, Donald Trump was apoplectic. He was enraged. He tweeted out, Twitter is now interfering... <laughs> In the 2020 presidential election, they are saying my statement on mail-in ballots, which will lead to massive corruption and fraud, which he presented no evidence for, is incorrect, based on fact-checking by fake news CNN and the Amazon Washington Post. Twitter is completely stifling free speech, and I, as president, will not allow it to happen. Yes, you heard that correctly. The president of the United States accused a private company of violating his First Amendment rights. You're not dreaming. This is real life. This is the dystopian future that we never thought we'd all see, but we're living it now. But he wasn't done there. As Variety reported, Trump is signing an executive order that would let U.S. citizens submit complaints if they feel they have been unfairly treated by social networks. So he's going to make it easier for us to speak to the managers of these social networks and uh, voice our grievances. And you know, I for one am all for it because I have a grievance with YouTube. Please stop deprioritizing independent media in favor of cable news like Fox News and CNN and MSNBC. But he's not done yet. <laughs> There's even more. So as NBC News reporter Sahil Kapoor reports, President Trump says he would shut down Twitter if his lawyers found a way to do it, but there are hurdles. I'd have to go through a legal process, he says, per White House poll report. And let's take it back to the beginning. All of this, this entire kerfuffle, is because <laughs> he's mad that they fact-checked him. That's it. They fact-checked him, and he wants to shut down Twitter. Donald Trump is the ultimate Karen. He should take that comb over and just let it hang down like in front of his eye, like the Karen haircut, um, because he is the ultimate Karen. Now, look, there is a conversation to be had about whether or not social media websites should engage in fact checking because 
that doesn't necessarily mean that they will be unbiased. I mean, for example, you have Facebook hiring a fact checker of the Daily Caller, which I personally don't trust, but that's a different conversation for a different day. The fact is they fact checked him, and in this instance, you know, they were correct, and he didn't like it. But guess what? Stop making shit up. He has been absolutely on a rampage against mail-in voting, and all he has is fear-mongering. He can't present evidence because this is not a widespread issue. And he sent out this bizarre email to people, which reads, We need to make one thing clear. There is no way that universal mail-in ballots will be anything less than substantially fraudulent. Mailboxes will be robbed, ballots will be illegally printed out and forged, and the election will be rigged. But that's just what the Democrats want, isn't it? They know they can't possibly beat President Trump, so their only path forward is through voter fraud so that they can try to steal the election. Yeah, so again, I'm inclined to say that he's losing it, but that would mean nothing. It wouldn't adequately describe, like, <laughs> anything different than what we've been seeing. But let's go to his concerns here. Mailboxes will be robbed, ballots will be illegally printed out and forged. Listen, I've said this once, I'll say it again. I live in Oregon. We have had vote by mail here for decades, and this has not happened. If you go to the Heritage Foundation's website, which you should never do, but if you did check out their cataloging of voter fraud and instances of voter fraud individually at the state level, for Oregon, they have, what, 13 instances of voter fraud that has happened over the course of 20 years. Would you call that a widespread problem? Because I wouldn't. And it's not that easy. Like, you can't just forge these types of ballots because what we do is we'll get it mailed to us, right? And it comes with an envelope. And in that envelope, before you can put your ballot in there, there's another little envelope and you have to sign that envelope before you um, before you mail it off. There's so much that you have to do that if you actually wanted to affect an election, that trying to rig the election by forging ballots, that's more work than finding some other way to actually fuck with the election. Like if you chose to uh, theoretically tamper with the machines that count the ballots that are mailed in, you'd be more effective that way. And when it comes to people robbing mailboxes, I mean, that is a federal offense. If you rob a mailbox, if you go into somebody's mailbox and take their mail, that is a federal offense. So if that were going to be something that happens, don't you think that it would have already been happening in states like Oregon that have mail-in voting? And here's the thing. If somebody hypothetically chose to steal my envelope in my mailbox and take my ballot um i could just request a new one and sure they can they can fill it out and forge my signature and all that but again the steps to commit voter fraud here i mean think about this people don't even think that their vote matters in this country right like people have checked out of the system 100 million americans don't even vote so they don't feel like their one vote matters so why would people if they truly wanted to rig an election or affect change politically illegally do something like that which would be the least effective way of rigging an election ever it just doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense now i would be happy to stand corrected if he provided us with evidence that maybe this is more widespread than it is. But guess what? It's not. It's not an issue. And this is about him being afraid of democracy. Because again, we always have to call it like we see it. Republicans don't want the turnout to be increased. And if you reduce the obstacles to voting, if you offer everyone automatic voter registration and mail-in ballots, and you make voting a national holiday, guess what's going to happen? More people will turn out and Republicans will lose because they have a fixed block of people that is always going to loyally turn out for them. And, you know, each election will hinge on whether or not Democrats are successful at getting out the vote. So they know that if they can just suppress the vote by demoralizing people or making voter voting a little bit more difficult, they can win. That's what this is about. Don't let him tell you anything other than that. This is about his own self-interest. He doesn't actually care about fraud. He doesn't. If he truly was concerned with voter fraud, then any election where it comes within 2%, for example, if it's a close race, that can trigger an automatic audit. He can tell Congress, send me that bill and I'll sign it into law. He can do that. There are ways that you can take precautions to audit the vote, right? Make voting more secure. Pass, you know, election 
security bills that have been introduced in Congress, right? Tulsi Gabbard has one that's great, but he's he's not doing that because he's a fraud. That's the thing. The only fraud here when we're talking about mail-in voting is Donald Trump, who is completely full of shit and somehow becoming even more unhinged than he usually is. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.